Welcome to This Organized Life. If you're a mom, wife, or coffee lover seeking advice on how to reduce clutter and reclaim time, look no further than your host, Lori Palau, founder of Simply Be Organized and author of Hot Mess, A Practical Guide to Getting Organized. For a lot of people, clutter is their dirty little secret, but it doesn't have to be. Each week, we will share practical tips, chat with experts, and provide strategies on how to keep you organized. I hope that by sharing our stories, you feel a little less alone and more empowered to tackle the areas that are holding you back. So let's get started. Hi, everybody, and welcome to today's episode of This Organized Life Podcast. I am your host, Lori Palau. And I hope that you guys are enjoying the guests that we've had on recently. We've been really had some amazing guests this past month or so. I mean, I think we always try to have really great guests, but we've just recently had a string of really like heavy hitters coming in here to talk about some really important topics and help us to think kind of outside the box of not just the tactical organizing, but the why we're doing things, how we can, how our mindset can really play into like our values and why we're doing what we're doing, why we're buying the things that we're buying, how we're spending our time. And so I really encourage you, if this is your first time tuning in, that go back or make sure you click the subscribe button, first of all, so you can have access to all of our episodes. But go back and listen to a lot of our other guests. You can either go all the way back into the archives or even just recently, just even within this past you know, five months of this calendar year and just pick and choose some of the great um, topics or the, the headlines that resonate with you. Because I'm telling you, I have learned a lot from our guests. I have learned a lot about ways to think about things or how decisions I'm making about how I'm spending my time, the people that I'm spending my time with, what I'm bringing in, what I'm letting go, why I'm doing all these things. Because I think it's so easy for us to kind of just get into this, like going through the motions that we don't always stop to have that level of intentionality. And um, today we're going to be con- just continuing on with another really stellar guest. And I had the privilege of being on her show not too long ago. We're going to make sure that we link back to that. But joining me today is my friend, Rebecca Ann, and she is a coach. She is in, I believe it's Utah. I could be wrong. She's going to correct me on that. Um, she's somewhere far away because we keep saying it'd be fun for us to like drink and have coffee and wine. And we just are not logistically near each other. Um, but Rebecca really helps women. She has a whole practice around helping women just find meaning in their lives and get rid of the physical stuff. She's not a professional organizer, but she really talks about just cultivating a life of meaning and getting rid of the things that are not serving you well, which hello is really what we're all about here at this organized life. And on a personal note, which I think is interesting and kind of ties into the whole like organization piece is Rebecca got married for the first time, which we're going to talk about last, last year when she was like 39. So spoiler alert, I just gave away that she's 40. Although if you're watching this on YouTube, she's like supermodel gorgeous um, and doesn't look a day over like 26. But, you know, I found it really interesting because you're talking about somebody that had a a adult life of living by yourself and de- bringing in the things that you want and developing the habits that you want and putting things away the way that you want them to. And all of a sudden now you are blending households and having to learn compromise and all those things. So I think that's going to be a really interesting, you know, topic for conversation that I would love to talk about. And um, really, I think ultimately, why we feel the need to take on so much. And I think whether that's take on so much physically with clothes and things, or it's just stuff on our calendar. Why do we need feel the need to say yes and commit to things? And so my goal is to help everybody simplify their lives. And Rebecca is doing that day in and day out with the women that she works with. So without further ado, let me welcome my friend, Rebecca, to the show. Welcome, Rebecca. 
Lori, I am so happy to be here. I love what you're doing. I love your energy. And I'm in Idaho, just as a... <laughs> oh, when I say Utah, I knew it was one of those. One of those where I couldn't pick it out on a, on a map. Okay. I've lived all over and I'm like, from California. So it's not like Idaho is, is real important to the story. But is, it I, I near, do... is it near Utah? I don't even know. Yeah, we're it close. Is? Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, all right, but all I right. do wish we lived closer because the little bit of you know, getting to know you that I've done it, that I've gotten to do. I just wish you're one of those people. I'm like, can we please literally like turn off work and go get coffee or something? I know. I know. So I'm happy to be. Well, listen, this is going to, this is going to have to do for now, but it's, I'm (laughs) sure there's going to come a time there will be, I, I, I feel it. So Mm -hmm. I gave like a very organic, um, kind of overview, but in your own words, can you just tell our listeners a little bit about you? And I didn't even dive into the fact that like, you really, when you were younger, like you really, like you led a lot of like mission work and really took a lot of forefront in the service field, yeah. especially yeah. In, in your faith. And that's something, cause my daughter does that too. And yeah. so that's a really big part of your story that I didn't even touch on. So just in your own words, tell our listeners a little bit about who you are and what you do. Yeah. Super quick bio. I am 40. I got married a year and a half ago for the first time, which was not my plan for my life. Right. I mean, I think every young woman, I mean, I did at least I wanted to get married and have kids young. And, um, that's just not the way that my life panned out, which is a whole story for a different time. But because it didn't pan out that way, I think I was about 25 when I went back to grad school and just decided like, okay, if, if like marriage and kids, isn't really the path that, that my life is going on at this moment. Um, I still want to make the most of my life. I love helping people. I love, uh, I, I just felt like a pretty natural born leader in general. And I didn't want to flounder, you know, when you don't have marriage or kids to kind of anchor your direction in life, I was like, okay, God, then what is it? Yeah. And, um, so I got my master's in counseling And during that time, yes, I led, you know, mission trips and traveled all over the world, which was amazing. Um, Practiced counseling for a couple of years, but then quickly switched to coaching because I'm, I'm a little more forward thinking and I, I love reaching goals. I love making the most of my life. I love freedom. I love helping other women get to that place. Um, And, you know, I just, I look around and I see so many women that like desire, basically they want to feel like they're making the most of their life. You know, they want to feel like they have forward motion. They want to enjoy life. They want to enjoy life. And yet when we look around, like there's not a lot of that happening. There's a lot of people who, who like, that's not their day-to-day experience. Um, and it can be. And so I've kind of dedicated my, my life to helping women find that and finding it myself. Like I, I can say that I learned to love my life and learned to love myself, which is not easy for a lot of people to do. Um, all before I got married, you know? And so, yeah, my, my twenties and my thirties were a a lot of learning and growing and then, and then learning how to lead other people, um, in their own growth. Um, and so now I do it full time. I speak, I travel and I coach and I love love it. it. (laughs) I love it. And I think, you know, again, you hit on something that is so relevant for so many people is we all want to have purpose. We all want to have meaning. Mm-hmm. We don't want to, I, I think for the most part, at least the mm-hmm. people that are listening to this show, mm-hmm. they want to be contributing to something beyond themselves, yes. yeah. their community, their jobs, their families, yeah. whatever it is. And yeah. for so many people we're in the, or you, it's easy to get caught up in the day-to-day tactical things that need to yes. keep your, the wheels yes. going, right? Laundry, yeah. dishes, chauffeuring, yeah. going away, like that. It's it's easy to get like that purpose thing for some people it to get really yeah. muddled. Like I feel very blessed. I just had this conversation on a previous recording. Like I feel really blessed that I get to do something I'm super passionate about and I get to do it for a living. Like, but not everybody is living that. And so, you know, for a lot of people, it's like, I don't even know what my purpose is other than to change diapers or just turn in this PowerPoint or whatever it is. And a lot of people feel stuck. We're going to have to edit that part out because we froze. Oh, not on my end. Oh, I I didn't hear you. And 
you, oh. you started saying, um, I feel really blessed. And then I lost. Oh, you. Okay. I'll pick it up from there. Sorry. So I was just saying, I feel really blessed that I get to get up and do something every day that I love to yeah. do and feel like I am contributing to something bigger than myself. But a lot yeah. of people aren't a lot of people are, and they might be, but they just don't feel that way. Right. I think for the most point is a lot of people just feel like I'm going through these tactical motions every day and it's not really moving the needle for me. It's not filling my cup. It's not. And they just are, they can't even see the forest through the trees. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so I I guess I don't even know where the question is in here, but just maybe you could just weigh into that. Cause I'm wondering if that's what you see. Yeah. A lot of these people or they're, or they're using like, kind of shallow things to try to fill their cup where it's not really. Well, yeah. And I can definitely get to the point or to the answer the question of like, well, how do they find that meaning or what can they do, you know, really practically to, to get out of that cycle that they're in. We'll get there. I think we should get there, but I would, I would take it all the way back to, and kind of start with the fact that a lot of people feel so cluttered to use a word that your people know um, in their mind, in their heart, in their, in their schedule, that the idea of like, what, I mean, like I could sit here as a life coach and say, this is exactly what you need to do to find some purpose, to find some meaning, to have a value driven life, to live with intention. But that feels so far away for so many women because they're in the grind that they're like, okay, that sounds nice for you, Rebecca, but like, I, I, I'm overwhelmed already. And so they are in survival mode. Um, so maybe, maybe we can talk about that a little yeah, bit. Yeah, absolutely. What, yes. What yes. Because I, in survival mode. Yeah. And, and that's really, I think for really what I think I was trying to get at in a total roundabout way mm-hmm. is I think everybody wants to, again, know what their values are, live this, you know, mm-hmm. well integrated harmony, whatever you want to call it, life where you feel like you can do a lot and where you feel like you're reaching your potential, where you feel like you're, where you just, you feel good about confident about like, this is the woman I am. This is the life I'm living. And someday when, you know, I'm kind of on my deathbed or something, I'm going to look back and, and be proud of how I lived and not be like, oh my gosh, I just went through the motions for 40 years. Right. No, absolutely. And so let's talk about that. Let's talk yeah. about that stress. So I think um, the survival mode that a lot of women feel like they're in, or uh, sometimes the wording I use is that instead of feeling like the pilot of your life, you feel like a passenger, like life is happening to me. I'm constantly responding to external stimuli. Um, you know, this is just my, I don't see a way out of it. I don't, mm-hmm. I don't see a way out of it. Um and there's a lot of reasons that, that women get into that position. I'll list a few if you want to dive into yeah, any of them. Yeah, can. for sure. I'm, I'm taking um, notes. Yeah. One of the reasons people get into that mode is because way, way back, they started to use busyness um, or just having a lot on their calendar as a avoidance mechanism. Totally. So, yep. you know, life didn't go the way I wanted, or I've got grief I haven't dealt with, or I'm maybe I'm even having struggles in my marriage or something like that. And instead of we're going to deal with this kind of stuff, I, well, it's a lot easier to just invite friends over, stay busy, watch TV. It's just a lot easier than dealing with what's under the surface. So that's one reason. Um, I think another reason is the people pleasing that's in a lot of us as women and, by people pleasing, I mean, you just have a, a real need to not disappoint people. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Okay. So people pleasing it, the opposite of people pleasing, it really is, is being able to say no, but it's extremely hard to say no. If your mother-in-law or your friend at work or somebody gives you this disappointed look and, and you just realize that, well, I let them down. Um, but if that's how you live and a lot of women do live that way, then those people and their demands on you are controlling your life. You're not. And, and that's a deep hangup. You know, that's, that's not an issue that women can just be like, okay, I'm going to set my schedule. I'm going to start to tell people no, because what'll happen is you've got a deep, deep issue there of like, well, 
is it okay if I disappoint people? Are people still going to love me if I just, am I enough if everybody's not happy with me? And so, so there's usually like deeper issues that, that are at play Mm -hmm. that a lot of men don't know about. And so instead of, you know, pointing to those deeper issues, they just feel like a failure. It's like, oh, I, I can't get on my, I can't organize my schedule. Like she can, I'm a failure. Or, Or they do it. Or they do it and then become resentful. And like right. I'm a, a John Deloney, I listen to John Deloney. I reference him a lot um, on the show. And he says all the time, and I think he got it from somebody else, but I don't remember the, the originator of the quote, but it says, choose guilt over resentment. And I think for a lot of people that struggle with that, because again, mm-hmm. I see so many people, specifically women in my life and mm-hmm. in our, in what I do that are mm-hmm just overwhelmed and taking on so much or don't have time to deal with the stuff at home because they're Mm -hmm. constantly saying yes to people and it's they don't they don't know how because they Mm -hmm. don't want to they don't want to disappoint but then they become snappy at their spouse or their kids or they're resentful absolutely there's this negative Mm -hmm. impact of we don't Mm -hmm. want to disappoint person over here, Mm -hmm. but the other people, including ourselves are really taking the brunt of it. Yeah, absolutely. Because we have such a need for rest and time Mm -hmm. alone and, you know, way more than women think. I've heard a lot of women who are like, oh, well, you know, they're like totally overwhelmed. They're even anxious and having physical anxiety symptoms or like all kinds of just like they're, they're in total fight or flight mode. And they'll say, well, I just need, you know, I'm just going to, I just need a pedicure or a manicure. And I'm like, no, you don't. You need to change your whole life. Like, like that's not a manicure or a pedicure situation we're in here. <laughs> that's like a, you, you need to know and understand that you weren't meant to live this busy. Yes. We're not yes. meant to live this busy. And, and like, we have limitations, which is like the hardest thing for some people to admit in the whole planet. But uh, anyway, I could really get off track there. Do you want me to give you the other was, two? Yes, I do. Oh my gosh. I love it. I'm so okay. funny. Yes. Go ahead. I'm here for all of it. So the other two that I commonly see are um, just a worth issue, right? I mean, if, if down mm-hmm. deep, we're not settled in the fact that I'm enough, that mm-hmm. I uh, just who I am is enough, even in my brokenness, even in my neediness, even in my, I can't do it all. Like I'm still, I'm still worthy. I'm still enough. Like that's a, there's, that's an, our, our sense of worth self, our self-concept of our worth is an internal job. It is not an external job. And so a lot of women are, I want to do this. I want to look like this. I want this person's approval. I want these clothes. I want my house to look this way all because they're they're hungry for, am I enough? Or do Mm -hmm. people admire me? Or you know what I mean? It's, it's, they're just hungry for that validation. I was just going to say that's so good because it really is true. It's like that. Yeah. I'm, I myself, just me, my own presence isn't, isn't enough, isn't enough validation. So I need to do all of these things in order to prove myself. And yeah. we're really just, I think, trying to prove it to ourselves. If well, we really and that's, it. yeah. And that's a bottomless pit. It won't ever be enough. It won't ever right. be enough. So there'll never be enough external validation enough. You know, you'll buy what you think is the perfect outfit or the perfect thing or post what you think is the perfect Instagram photo. And that lasts moments before you feel like you need to do it again. Well, think about people. And again, I make a lot of analogies about exercise and weight loss and kind of the stuff I do because, and I think, but you think about like, you want to lose weight, you know, people say, okay, or I want to get down to a size this, or I want to fit into these jeans or whatever it is. And that's all well and good, especially if you're like not feeling healthy in your own skin. But if the, if the reason is just sort of like thinking, well, I'll be happy then if I can fit in. Yeah. Like we've all know if you have ever gotten to that, like that, yeah. like you said, is fleeting yeah. because if, if that's, you know, it should be the, so that, right. Like I want to fit into jeans so that I have more energy so that I can live a longer life so that right. I can do all these things, not be like the end result is being in a size four, you totally. know? 
Yeah, I mean, the the foundational identity issues and value and worth issues of just kind of like embodying, like I'm enough, I'm a human being, you know, and from my worldview, I'm made in the image of God. I'm here on purpose. He, he put me here on purpose to do good works. Like I know who I am. I don't have to prove it to anybody. I, and, and to operate from that place makes it, makes all this other stuff enjoyable and kind of optional, but none of it is necessary to make me feel good about myself. Right. None of it. So that's a, that's a big one. When it comes to why do women take on too much? Why are they cycling? What's the fourth? Did we do the fourth? I don't have the four. We have the, I have the three. That is the fourth. Um, Which so is- the fourth was like avoiding difficult emotions. People pleasing was number two. Oh no, that was the third. No, I have busyness, people pleasing, self-worth. What am I missing? Yes. Okay. Okay. So the fourth would be just like general FOMO, fear of missing out. Oh yeah. Mm. <laughs> Which this one is, is more me actually. Um, I, uh, I don't know if you do much with the Enneagram. You do, don't you? I do. I'm a whole okay. Enneagram junkie. Cause what okay, are you? I was seven. asking, I was going to say, I couldn't remember what you were. Oh, so you're total FOMO. Me? I couldn't care less about FOMO. I'm yeah, like, no, I am. You? I, the best way to describe me it like, I've, I've got my like self-worth issues and my organization, all that stuff settled me. I have a bucket of, I guess you could say experiences or pleasure or whatever. And for me, it feels like there's holes in the bottom. There's like, literally I could travel the world. I could buy all the clothes. I could do all the things I could eat all the food and for my, the way my personality is wired is that it just never feels like it's enough. Mm. And so I have to have more stuff on the calendar and I have to try more and I have to do more simply because that's just the way sevens are. Yeah. <laughs> and, and so for me, for me, you know, my work then is contentment because, mm. because I do have enough, like I have enough, I am enough, right. I enough, I've done enough. And, and so the work of contentment, I have enough, like I'm just, just the enough word for me. And that's different for everybody. The the core issues of why am I too busy? Why do I take on so much are really individual to every woman. Yes. Um, But if I ever get to the point where I'm burning out, it's because of that. It's because I just, I have this almost scarcity mindset about the future of like, well, if I don't do it now, I'm going to miss out on something. And So I have to do a lot of taking thoughts captive and self-talk about like, it's okay to rest. You can do more tomorrow. Like you're okay if you're bored. (laughs) Like you're not partaking in the thing that, right. right. And I'm buying something new or trip, like breathe girl, like all that stuff is coming, but yeah, that's, that's, that's the work I have to do. Mm -hmm. And I think if you look at, and again, we've done series and tons of episodes on the Enneagram. And if you're new Mm -hmm. here, the Enneagram is personality typology, and it looks at your core motivation for things. There's Mm -hmm. nine different types and Mm -hmm. each type has its own like strengths and struggles is what I call them. And Mm -hmm. I think if you look at those, you know, those four pillars that you that you talked about, which again, we're going to link to also is, you know, busyness is avoidance, the people pleasing, the self-worth, the FOMO, all of these things are distractions. They're all just distractions that are, that we're all chasing for different reasons. So you could say an Enneagram two could be people pleasing because that's their thing. You know, again, not, I'm not trying to say all Enneagram people are X, Mm -hmm. Y, and Z, but I think you could, you could find through lines for each of those and how the different Enneagram types could, could struggle with them. And again, so if you are aware of this, right, like, I think the first, like the, the first step is identifying this, right. Naming it. Like, I know this is where I'm struggling, Mm -hmm. but then it's like, what do I do about it? So, okay. If I know that I am somebody that struggles with, I'm a busyness is avoidance person or whatever Mm -hmm. it is where, how do you stop that cycle? Where do you begin to say, Mm -hmm. I got to break this and like start to develop new habits? Cause what I've been doing isn't working. Yeah. So two things, first of all, I, I would sit down after this episode and I would list all the things that it's costing me. Like Mm. my busyness or avoidance costing me, what is my FOMO or my people pleasing nature costing me? And 
you know, you kind of have to raise your level of, of motivation to change first of all. Um, but then I would also ask yourself, how has it been serving me in the past? Because yeah. a lot of these things have been coping mechanisms for people, uh, or, you know, they did get you through maybe a difficult time or whatever. There's a lot of reasons that we hang on to these habits that aren't serving us. Mm-hmm. And you need to figure out why you're hanging on to the habit. And if you really want to change it, I mean, well, at the end of the day, yes. we want your life and your brain and your heart to be more or more peaceful than you do. Do you want to change it or don't you? <laughs> right. It's so funny that you say that because I will say to my kids who are now like 19 and 22, specifically my 19 year old who is often impulsive and doesn't always think things through before she acts. Yeah. yeah. And my, like one of the, my, the many like catchphrases I say to her is like, how's that working out for you? Like, how's yeah. that working out for you? You know? And I, so it's too, like, how is this serving you? Like, yeah. is what you've been doing up into this point working for you? Like, yeah. are, cause again, we all know the definition of insanity is repeating the same thing over and over again, expecting a different result. And I yeah. think for so many of us, we just have either accepted this, yeah. like, this is the way it is. Yeah. You know, yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm just the one that has to do it all. No mm-hmm. one else is going to do anything. I don't ever have time. And we, whether it's playing mm-hmm. a murder role or taking that on or using mm-hmm. that as a badge of honor or yeah. something that mm-hmm. we, um, you know, that we, we, we make it seem like that there is no other alternative. And I yeah. love that you're saying that there is. Yeah, there is. Um, and here's another really practical thing you can, anybody can do. It doesn't matter why the, why doesn't really like you could be all over the Enneagram and have all these different issues, but sure. here's something everybody can do. Sit down and write out your ideal day or like your ideal schedule. Mm-hmm. So like, what would a perfect, like how much alone time would I have? Would I, would I, um, cook every day? Would I not cook every day? Would my husband help me clean? Would my kids this, what, how much, how many hours would I have for work? Would I take a walk every day? Like, first of all, that would be hard for some women because they're so not in touch with themselves anymore. And they don't think they matter anymore that they're just like my ideal day. So that's a big red flag. If you can't sit down and give it five or 10 minutes and even imagine what your ideal day would look like, which does include, you know, serving and loving other people. We're not talking about selfish, but like, what, what would your ideal day look like? Okay. And then as soon as you write that out, start to notice all the thoughts that are coming up because those thoughts are the problem. And the thoughts are going to be things like, I don't deserve this. This isn't possible for me. My husband will never help. The thoughts will be things like, who am I to think that I would be allowed to have a day like this? Or um, well, I'm I, selfish. How dare I see? That's what I, I'm thinking. Yeah, I'm thinking I'm, people would be like embarrassed to say no, well, my ideal day. No. I would go to like a yoga class for an hour and a half. And then, you know what I mean? Like some people yeah. might be like, I can't, how some dare people. I even imagine that? No, no, no. Yeah. See, and then that's the problem. So the issue is whatever thoughts come up, whatever lies Mm. at that moment. And that's where working with, you know, a coach or something or accounts, well, usually coaches help with this kind of stuff, but that's where that can help because you let's explore that thought. Is it, would it be selfish of you? If it was, if it, if you got to go to a yoga class every day, right? Yes or no? Like, is it? <laughs> right, right, I, right. Well, I oh. don't think so. I work out all the yeah. time, but I, yeah, yeah, no. yeah, yeah. but, but yes. we have to challenge those thoughts and we have to prove to people that when you are um, taking care of yourself, you can take care of other people better. Mm. End of story. Like, you know. And I think we have to go through it. You know, I'm sitting here. I, I've got like a little over a decade on you. Right. So I'm in my early Mm fifties and I think back to my Mm thirties and even in my early forties, when I was in the weeds with my kids Mm -hmm. and I was like, I don't have time to exercise. Like who has time to exercise? Mm -hmm. And, you know, I couldn't do this. I have to, and I, again, it was all self-inflicted. It wasn't that. Yeah. 
you know, it wasn't that I had a husband who was supportive. And if I, mm-hmm. and I had plenty of I had a huge support system, I still do of friends and neighbors where if I was like, Hey, I'm going to do something. Like I would watch somebody yeah. watch my kid or I could hire a babysitter. Like there's yeah. a million things, but I told myself this false narrative that I then like doubled down on and believed yeah. it yeah. for so long. Yeah. Yeah. Why for and, why? Usually, and usually that false narrative that we tell ourselves is not really in our conscious awareness either, which is another part of the reason it's very hard to fix on your own. Like it's yeah. very hard in the moment for you to understand that those thoughts are what's holding you back because you, you're not really, con- they're, they're subconscious, right? Right. You kind of need somebody to listen and reflect them back to you and bring them to your mind and be like, Oh my gosh, that's what I was thinking. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? Cause I still have those moments. I have those sure. moments in life where I'm like, Oh my gosh, I didn't even realize that was like happening under the surface there. So I say that mainly to encourage women who are listening, who beat themselves up because they think, why can't I get a handle on this? Or why can't I grow? Or why can't I just be like, so, so, and so most of the time, this is stuff we can't really hundred percent sort out on our own. And that's why we're given community, you know, the body help people to talk to. <laughs> right. And that's it. We weren't met. And I talk about this all the time. Like we weren't put on this earth to live by ourselves in silos. Oh. Like we're built for connection and relationships and yeah. community. And so I think that is, you know, yeah. I don't, there's, but again, I subscribed to it for so many years of that looking mm-hmm. at asking for help or saying, Hey, mm-hmm you know, Mm -hmm. as, as a sign of defeat, or I was not deserving of this. And Mm -hmm. again, it's, it's like, where does that come from? But like, you can change that and you just need to be intentional about it. Yeah. Can I reframe that deserving for you? If there's any women who are struggling, like, like you said, okay, so write, write out your ideal day. And all of a sudden they think that's selfish or I don't deserve that. Okay. Let me, let's do a massive reframe here. Okay. Uh, on on a certain level, you're right. I don't I don't think as humans we deserve anything. Everything is a grace. Everything is a gift. That's my perspective. Yep. But we are responsible. So mm-hmm. it's not that you deserve to have an a perfect day and everybody else doesn't. Because I also didn't say perfect. I said ideal. But you women listening are responsible for your your you have a gift of resources and time and talents and you have to steward your gift. You have a family, you have a home, you have a certain amount of income, however much that is, you have a certain amount of energy every day and planning out your ideal day is not a selfish thing that maybe you don't deserve. It's responsible. Mm -hmm. Like, it's like, I am a grown woman. (laughs) Like This is my life. Nobody's going to do this for me. I want to love myself and love other people. Well, like this is what we all want out of life and nobody's going to do it for you. So sitting down and saying, what would it look like? Ideally, what would it look like? Ideally? I just don't see that as like, it doesn't even cross my mind that that's selfish. It crosses my mind that that's like mature. Right. And I think also, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. No, I just wonder what you think. Like, does that sound? No, I love it. No, no, no. I love it. I think two things I want to, I want to kind of elaborate piggyback on. Even if your ideal day Mm -hmm. is so far from what your reality is right now, taking a small step, right? It it, right because there might be such a disconnect between where you are and what your ideal day looks like. It's just one incremental thing that you could do to just move even the needle a tenth of a degree. Amen. Okay. So that's the first thing. The other thing is, and again, I come at this also because from the mom hat of what type of behavior am I modeling for Mm -hmm. my kids? What type am I, do I want to raise, and I happen to, and I happen to be a mom of, of girls also, but I mean, I think this could go regardless of anything, but do I want to model to my children that you do you just run yourself ragged to the point where you don't ever take time for yourself and you never prioritize your own well-being? I have actually a story about a friend of mine, very good friend of mine, and she's got um, 
some grown kids like me. And then she has a 10 year old also. And we went for a walk on a, like a Sunday morning and her daughter was like, where are you calling? And she's like, I'll be home by a certain time. And she was like, the daughter was like, how did like, was really like annoyed that she wasn't at home. Yeah. And I said, and she, you know, my friend was visibly like, frustrated. she's like, I never take time for myself. We're going for this walk. Mm-hmm. And I just said, you, not that you owe her an explanation, but explain to her also, instead of just going there and yelling at her, explain to her that like, just like you take time with your friends, like explain, like we need this, like you need this to be like a better mom, a healthier this, that. And I think a lot of times we don't articulate our own needs to the people in our lives, whether that's a partner, a spouse, a kid, an aging parent that you might be taking care of. Yeah. I love that so much. And I will say that my, you know, I don't have kids, but my own mom modeled that for me. I mean, I, I distinctly remember watching her journal sometimes, which I'm a big journaler now. That's I did, so good. I distinctly remember that she would get this magazine every month that she would sit and drink tea and read her magazine. And like, no wonder I'm like pretty easy, easily do that stuff now. But also my mom is a, a pastor's wife and, um, you know, people who are in ministry almost always take on too much. They almost always. Oh, occupational hazard for yeah, sure. Yeah. <laughs> but she was somebody who just like, she never felt that need or that pressure to like make everybody in the church happy. She would do what she felt, you know, God was calling her to do and she would not do the rest. And she didn't really care because she's like, I don't answer to those people. She's, but she's like one of the most kind and loving people in the world. So I'm not saying she wasn't kind and loving. She just understood that it was like between her and my dad or her and the Lord and that she only had so much to offer. Um, so I want to, I want to affirm what you just said. You are modeling this for your kids. You are absolutely modeling this for your kids. Yeah. They will learn from you. They'll learn rest from you. They'll learn self-acceptance from you. They'll learn that, you know, the opinions of other people don't drive us, but we can love other people better. Like when, I mean, all of this, I did see in my mom. That's mm-hmm. awesome. I love it. Okay. We have to just pivot real quick because I, I, I feel like we've given so much and we're going to do our call to action, but I have to ask because I know we touched on it a little bit, but since our show is about like organizing time, space, all the things you lived on your own. I did. Or like, well, Years. I mean, you didn't live on your own. You didn't live on your own for two decades, but you know what I mean? Like you, you had in a whole adult life, like I did before you got married. Yeah. Responsible for my own space, my own cleaning, my own cooking, my own money, everything. Yes. And then your life just, you know, you just went, you went for it. And I'm just, as I'm I'm 25, (laughs) as I'm 25 years in going, oh my God, why? No, no, I'm just kidding. (laughs) No, No, but, but in all honesty, uh, can you just talk a little bit about that? Because I think that that's good. That's really going to be interesting for a lot of our listeners out there. Oh yeah. Um, I mean, on a, on a very practical level, I do remember when, you know, he was moving all of his stuff in, which was like the weekend before we got married. And I was like, you know, immediately hit with like, Oh, okay. My decor is going to change a little. And that we're not hanging that picture of the horse. You yeah. Know, was he it, like, I'm bringing this chair and you're like, no, you're not. Yeah. There was a lot of that, but luckily he's very flexible and like a super easy man to get along with. And so the, as far as decorating and even organizing and stuff like that, he, he pretty much let me do what I wanted, but I did have to make sure, I mean, I had to serve him as well. I'm like, we can't just throw away all of his stuff, like for all of his memories, because they don't fit in with my stuff. Like, um, because yeah, he, he was renting at the time. And so we, we moved into quote unquote, my house or where I was living. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, there was definitely some practical stuff there, but all of it, I mean, even how we organize our time, our schedule, money. I mean, all that stuff. Your habits, like, he, habits. you know what I mean? Like you yeah. might be like, um, every time we wash the dish, it goes right into the dishwasher and he might be like. <laughs> yeah, there was a little bit of that. He definitely tended to leave stuff on the counter, you know, and I'd be like, let's just put it right in there. Or I'm, I, let's take the garbage all the way out to the garbage can, not just put it, you know, in the garage or something like that. If, to be honest, because I'm a deep 
I'm just a deep thinker. Like that's what I do. I can't help myself. It was, it was mainly for me. It was just pausing and recognizing there's not a right and a wrong way to do everything. And this isn't a character issue. Like mm. it, it's not a character issue. It doesn't mean that he's lazy. It doesn't mean that he doesn't care about me or love me. Um, because it could have, I could have easily tried to control and be like, you have to do it this way. Um, and I just decided not to, to be honest. And, uh, I could have easily labeled that I was right and he was wrong, but who's to say he's not right. And I'm wrong. Maybe a more relaxed way of living is better than this all has to look perfectly clean all the time. And so, yeah, there were some major challenging of like uh, my, just the way I've done stuff. But I, my main concern was if it's a big enough deal, if it's like a really big deal, I'll bring it up and we'll compromise on it. But other than that, like, I'm not going to try to control this person. I'm not going to tell him, you know, how to live and what to do and how to act. It's his home too. Mm -hmm. And he doesn't control me either. So that's really helpful. Like he doesn't ever try to tell me what to do or how to live or how to act. So, um, yeah, I mean, we, I don't know if that answers your question. No, it's great. And I love that you said it's not a character flaw because I think we're all, it's, it's for so many of us, it's like a knee jerk reaction to be like, why, again, like you said, like, why are you so lazy or why are you so uptight or why are you so, and we are judging the person based yeah, on the action. Not, it's not true and it's not helpful and it's not compassionate. It's not fair. Like to be able to look at that person and just be like, I know what I know about you and your character. And I, and I, it's okay. If we do this differently, I'm not going to hold it against you. I'm not going to label you. I'm not going to villainize. Again, if it's a big enough deal, like there were a few moments where I was like, this I think is an issue. It's going to become an issue. And he's called me out on a few things too. This is, this is a a problem that could really develop into something we resent or that drives us apart. But most things are not that they're not that most things are not that big. Yeah. So being able daughter would say, it's not that deep. Like it's it's not that deep. Yeah. It's It's just, this is, even if you had lived with roommates in college who were your best friends in the whole world, you would be having these small differences. Like it's not that big of a deal. Right. And I think, I think for anybody, whether you are living with roommates, whether you get married at 25 or 30 or live, you know, at 40, I think a lot of it has to do with having healthy communication because very rarely it's about the stuff, right? Very rarely it's about the dish or the clothes on the floor. It's about how that makes you feel. It makes me feel anxious. It makes me feel disrespected that you're just expecting me to pick up after you or so it's really about that. What's underneath it than the thing itself and just having that communication. I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah. And I also found that I just had to ask. So there were, there was a, a time, a moment I remember where I had worked all day and he had to, and I was very exhausted and I needed to fold clothes and he could tell I was exhausted. And he was like, what, like, what do you want? What do you need? And there was a part of me that was like, nothing, you know, I'm just going to go. Fold yes. the clothes. Yes. But that's, that's on me. That's on me. If I say nothing. Mm-hmm. And so I had to make a choice to say, I need help folding the clothes. Right. And he said, okay. And we folded clothes while we watched TV. Like, you know, so it, it's real. it is about being able to healthily express, you know, and luckily he was, you know, kind enough and nice enough to be like, yeah, I'm gonna help you fold the clothes. <laughs> but right, but I love that because so many people are like, why doesn't he just read my mind? Can he see I'm stressed and he should no. just know to fold the clothes? No, we, we need say to- need help folding the clothes and be quiet and fold the clothes with him. <laughs> I love it. I love it. It's so simple and practical. And yet yeah. people are like, oh, right. That's yeah. why didn't I do that? Yeah. I mean, I've even, I like to cook and kind of feel quote unquote responsible for meals and stuff, but I've gotten to the point where I'm like, I have a night meeting where we're on our own for dinner, or do you want to cook dinner? And he doesn't give me kickback on that. It's just a, but, but again, how can he know? And I'm not going to set myself up to be exhausted and resentful. I'm going to communicate with him. And he's like, okay, cool. And you know, yeah, I love it. It's that's, that's what teamwork, partnership, marriage, yeah. relationships are all about. I love it. Yeah. There's been so much great, great info. Okay. Before we take our last break, tell our listeners, where is the best place to connect up with you? Learn more if they want to 
work with you, all the things, tell them, drop it all. Yeah, so, um, mainly I operate from Instagram and my website. Um, Instagram is the, the, it's all one word, obviously the real Rebecca Ann. Um, I'm sure you can link that. And my website is Rebecca dash Ann.com. Mm-hmm. Um, so I go by just my first name, but yeah, I used my first and my middle name because I was single when I started my business. And I was like, if I get married, I don't want to have to change my, all of my marketing and all of my branding. Was that the, was that the rationale? But oh yeah, my gosh, yeah, that's so funny. When I started my business, my name was Rebecca Gregory. And I'm like, I don't want to have a website and all this content that I'm going to have to change if I get married. And sure enough, now my last name is Perkins, but Rebecca Ann was you know, going to stay the same. So that's why I picked it. I love it. See, look at you. Look at you, smarty (laughs) pants. But yeah, no, I just, um, yeah. So Rebecca and it's spelled R E B E K A H dash A N N E.com. Um, and yes, I, uh, my coaching roster at this moment is pretty full. I always do discovery calls, but I'm about a month out on -on one-on-one coaching. Um, but I, I have a group coaching program called the abundant life lab, And I just help women work on these deeper things. Um, So there's like six pillars. It's only $97 a month. So it's very, very affordable, but we work on the identity, the emotional intelligence, the taking control of your life. Like a lot of these things we've talked about today, actually um, in a really slow and kind of sustainable pace, because I think the last thing women need is like more books to read and more podcasts to listen to and more things they feel like they need to do. So I've created the lab to like attack the, the, the most important high impact areas in a way that doesn't make you feel even more overwhelmed, if that makes sense. I love um, it. Yeah. Love so, it. Yeah. And we'll link to all things, mm-hmm. Rebecca, on cool. our website, in our show notes. So wherever you're listening or watching, you can just click in there and you'll have, we'll have all the things for you to find her, learn more. Yeah. Get on our newsletter, all that, all that stuff. All right. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we're going to just put you in the hot seat for our wrap up questions and then you'll be on your merry way, Missy. So okay. sit tight. So Rebecca, this has been awesome. And again, we will link speaking of podcasts um, again, your show is called coffee conversations and coaching, right? Is that the name of it? Coffee with Rebecca. Coaching yeah. with Rebecca, which mm-hmm. will link to that episode that I was on your show, um, okay. which was such a fun episode um, as well in our show notes. So I love to ask this question because I love to get into the minds of our guests. So mm-hmm. in terms of books, we're mm-hmm. always looking for books that are inspiring or had an impact in your life. And for our listeners out there. And it could be something fun and lighthearted. It could be something super serious, fiction, nonfiction, doesn't really matter. We've had all the things. If there's a book that you were to either come back to yourself or that you say, Mm -hmm. you know, this has been really, really impactful in my world, what would that be? And if you have a couple, you can name them both. I'm going to go with um, this book. It's called Rest. Ooh, okay. Um, it's by Alex. I don't know how to pronounce the middle names. Pang. I can okay. show you or, or people who are watching, but yes. Um, so I did go through a time in my life where I, before I started my business, I was in management at, at the collegiate like level and w- did get burned out, went through anxiety, literally went to the ER a few times for having panic attacks. Like oh, that, that is part of my story because I'm a high achiever and a doer and the seven in me, right? Like I did all the things I was good at a lot of things, but I didn't, I hadn't learned to say no, I hadn't Mm. learned limitations. And when all of that started to change me and change my life, and I had to take a major step back one, this book changed me because it's all about how the subtitle is why you get more done when you work less. Mm, Um, I love that. And it makes the rationale that more rest, more rejuvenation, more letting pleasure or joy into your life makes you a more productive person. And so it really changed my mindset and it really changed my approach to life. And it's probably why I'm so like gracious now with my time and gracious with myself that it's like, eh, just, you you seem very chill. You seem like a very chill person. Yeah, I am. And I get a lot, and yet I get a lot done, but I am chill because I know that that being chill and really, really taking care of myself makes me do my best work. It makes me love me better. It produces the best results 
but this book, my own crash kind of, and then this book had a lot to do with that. I love it. I'm going to, I'm going to get it. See, this is why I ask these questions. <laughs> this is why I ask these questions. Okay. And then our last two questions that we ask every guest in every episode is in this particular season of your life, where do you feel the most organized and where do you feel like a little bit of a hot mess? And from now on, I've started, I'm asking people to do their hot mess minute question first, because I like to end on a high note. And so I don't want to end on where you're a hot mess. So do you mean practically like in my could, home, in my it, stuff or it could be. Yeah. I mean, it could be in a, we've had people say like, you know, my email is a hot mess. It could say your my closet's a hot mess. You could say my cars, whatever. So like you tell me. My email is probably where I feel the most sorted. Like really? Like, oh, that's I, so rare. I think I have one email in my inbox right now. Yeah. Dude, yeah, I, I can't have, to have you on <laughs> to talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't do uh digital clutter, emotional, mental overwhelm, which we I, we could talk even about that. Like, and that's yeah. a whole different topic. That's actually how do you keep your mind uncluttered? the really practical stuff of clean out your inbox and have your to-do list. But yeah, I don't mental clutter shuts me down. So yeah. I, I just stay on top of stuff like that. Um, I would say, yeah, my email probably is my most organized. I love organized. that. And my least organized at the moment is that closet right there. <laughs> it's off camera. So don't worry. You can't even see. Uh, it's my little, yeah, it's my little work closet and, uh, there's files and books and promotional items all over that I, one of these days I'm going to be like, I'll organize it when I have time. One of these days, but see, but we asked this question because we just really want to show light about the authenticity. And that again, yeah. not everybody is, there's no such thing as perfect. No, not everybody has it all together in every no. aspect of their lives. No. And so as much as it's not to like call you out, it's really, we ask that question because again, we want to show people, even the people who like yourself have so much like yeah. togetherness, mm -hmm. even like even no. the most together people have a little bit of yeah. a hot mess. And if I do have any togetherness, it's because I, it's not because I, oh, I've learned all the strategies and I've done all the things and I've implemented all the tools. It's really because I'm, uh, I throw stuff out, whether, <laughs> it's, whether it's obligation yeah. or responsibilities or things I've taken on in my business. If I start to feel like stuff is spiraling and too messy and too out of control, I don't shame myself. And I don't just try harder. I say, what's got to go. Because oh I know gosh, my limits are so down good. here and I can only handle so much at one time. So if I want things to be peaceful, productive, sorted, that's not a matter of try harder. That's a matter of what do I have to cut out? I love that. I think that's a right there. That's a wrap, right? That that's, cool. that's it. But there's nothing else we could, nothing else we can say, Rebecca, thank you so much for well, coming on the show, sharing your knowledge, wisdom, insights with our community. Um, if this is your first time tuning in, you picked a good one to join us. Um, if you're a longtime OG, thank you so much for being here. Make sure to click the subscribe, follow button. Again, YouTube, Spot, Spotify, Apple, wherever, wherever you want to listen or find us, we're there. Um, and just remember, we're now dropping two episodes a week. We have our tip of the week that we're dropping on Mondays. There are short form episodes that are just giving you one actionable thing to start your week off well. And then we have our long form interview style uh, conversations that happen every Thursday. So if you like our show, there's no shortage of content. So tell a friend, reach out to us on socials. We are here for you. Until next week, I'm Lori Platt. Thanks for tuning in. If you like this episode, please spread the love and share it with your friends. And if this is your first time joining us, make sure to click the subscribe button wherever you are listening so you never miss an episode. And while you're there, please leave us a review so other people know that our show is worth the listen. You can also find us on YouTube and Instagram at This Organized Life Podcast. And if you'd like to connect with us, you can head on over to our website at simply the letter B, like boy, organized.com, which is filled with tons of resources, including free downloads, checklists, links to our amazing organizing partners, and all of our digital offerings. I'll see you next week for another episode of This Organized Life.